Hello everyone. I extend a warm welcome to the all attendees and panelists to the second series of webinar organized by Shakti and the Kennedy Institute. The first series was based on writing good proposals. The second series is more practical in nature and is more focused in the details, like what is a program, its prerequisites, and eligibility, areas of research, budgeting, sharing of resources among partners, timeline of grant, and its report. Am I audible? Yes. Am I audible? Yes, yes Rishma, you are. Yes, yes. yes. Today we much. have Dr. Prati Paul from Shastri Indo Canadian Institute, Prof. Shaha from University of Laval, and Prof. Ashraf from Jamia Malia Islamia. Prof. Shaha is a full professor of Faculty of Medicine at University Laval. He is a senior researcher of CHU Cure Research Center of the Quebec Hospitals and Chief of the Laboratory. He is also on the board of directors of the Carcinoid Neuroendocrine Tumor Society, Canada, and is also serving as president of the Scientific and Medical Advisory Board of CNS Canada since 2014. Dr. Shah has received an award for outstanding achievement in carcinoid neuroendocrine tumor research in 2006 from the Carcinoid Cancer Foundation Incorporation. Dr. Shah has also been a recipient of the Junior and Senior Research Scholar Award from the Quebec Health Research Fund, and Dr. Shah has served Sikhi as president during the year 2017 and 18. Uh, uh, another uh, speaker is Professor uh, Mohammad Jahid Ashra, who is presently a professor at Department of Biotechnology and director at Jamia Malia. He is known for his work resolving the mystery of blood clotting on exposure to hypoxia at high altitudes and mechanisms associated with its pathology. He is a fellow of the National Academy of Sciences, Allahabad, and the Indian Academy of Sciences, Bangalore. He is a member of prestigious Goha Research Conference. Professor Ashraf is also the recipient of prestigious ICMR Basanti Devi Amir Chand and DBT National Biosciences Award for his seminal work in high thermobiology. He is also Received Innovations Award 2008 of the Cleveland Ill Clinic, US. Uh, and next, yes. we have Dr. Patrick Paul with us, who is the director of Shastri Indo Canadian Institute. Uh, she has been associated with the Institute more than 14 years now and alumna of IIT Delhi. Dr. Carl has served uh, to international and national bodies like Plan International, Plan International and National University of Education and Planning and Administration before joining Shastri Institute. She is a social scientist with keen interest in studying aspirations on social mobility of masses and its relation to higher education. Dr. Cole serves on the board of couple of academic and research institutions and also on Education Committee of India, Canada, Chamber of Commerce. Now, I would like Dr. Prachi Cole to give details about the program, uh, Shastri Institutional Collaborative Research Grant. Dr. Cole. Thank you so much, Reshma, for your humble introduction uh, to all the speakers who are the guests here. And uh, uh, to add on to what Reshma talked about, we have a very special guest, Dr. Devish Shah. He's a researcher, a wonderful researcher, and a wonderful teacher. He can explain things in a layman's, uh, layman's way where you know, science becomes very difficult for me to understand, but he can explain it to you. So the audience who are here with us today, would be really, really delighted to listen to him. I mean, how he explains things in such a lucid manner that it becomes very, very easy to grasp what he needs to say. The communication, the science communication we have been talking about, and we are planning to hold a couple of webinars in that series as well. And I think Dr. Shah, we would like you to be part of those series because I know you are an excellent communicator. So thank you for agreeing to be here. Uh, another introduction that comes along with Dr. Shah is that he has served Shastri as a president, before that as a vice president, as well as, as a secretary to Shah. So uh, I want to extend a warm welcome to our past president of the Institute to uh, be present with us just as an awardee, but he carries various caps on head, you know, uh, in, in different stature. So very warm welcome to you and your collaborator, Dr. Ashraf, uh, for this presentation. Uh, to begin with, I think uh, I would like to talk about the program uh, because this is the one of the, I would say, one of the most sought program from Shastri Institute. Piki, if you can start the presentation, I can go through the slides that we have. 
and uh, talk about it. Uh, so this is a program primarily uh, <clears throat> created to build up a team of uh, researchers from India and Canada. And uh, as you will get to see and you'll get to hear from our two scholars who are present here, Dr. Shah and Dr. Ashraf, they formed a team and applied to Shastri Institute for this program, which is called Shastri Pro, Pro, Shastri Pro Research uh, what do you call it, Reshma? <laughs> Shastri Research Collaborative Research Grant. Yeah, Institutional Collaborative Research Grant, wherein the responsibility of the funding lies, uh, though for in terms of disbursement lies with the, with the institutions, uh, but uh, the work is being carried out by the researchers. So this is the program, Shastri Institutional Collaborative Research Grant. And uh, the I would say that this is... Uh, to encourage institutional collaboration in research and development, uh, which is primarily for two years and in the areas in which institutions from Sikhi's Indian and Canadian Member Council can benefit. So you, the first prerequisite goes for this program that you have to come from a member institution uh, from India side and Canada side. The list is available on the website of the Shastri Institute. So you can refer that and select an institution if you, if you see that you are coming from a, a member institution, you are eligible, but the partner that you are envisaging to partner with should also be coming from the member institution from Canada side or India side. There can be a collaboration happening from within Indian, uh, you know, in between Indian institutions and in between Canadian institutions, though there is a possibility by which two institutions from India side and one from Canada side can apply for the grant. So, uh, it is open for member institutions of India, uh, Shastri Institute from India and Canada side both. Uh, this grant intends to fill information gap for policymakers and other uh, others, those are influencing the policy making processes. Uh, proposals can be developed and submitted from all domain of knowledge and discipline under this program. So uh, even if you are coming from science, technology and engineering field, uh, even if you are from social sciences or allied subjects, even if you are a law faculty, you can apply for this uh, program because uh, uh, we are encouraging uh, subjects and knowledge domains from, a, from all areas. So uh, it is for you to decide which area is going to be uh, beneficial for you too. But how, uh, having said that, I would say that there are a couple of priority areas that we have mentioned in our website. So if you go to the website and see the program description, you will find those enlisted there. Next slide, please. Sorry for the frozen screen. Just give me one moment. Yeah. Yeah. Can you see that? Yes. Uh, mm, mm, yes, it is coming in. <coughs> I have uh, much talked about the eligibility. I would say that the objectives remain as to support and encourage institutional collaboration. Uh, and that is in between Indian and Canadian institutions in the areas, uh, as I said, uh, wherein the members and the researchers can gain and develop uh, researches. Carry on, please. Next slide. It is a multi-year grant, so the duration is two year, and the value of award is 10 lakhs, uh, which comes to around 18,000 Canadian dollar, depends on the exchange rate at that particular time when the grant is dispersed. And this grant is uh, disbursed equally in three installment. installments. Installments, uh, 50% is uh, disbursed in first year, and then 85% in the second year. And the remaining is, uh, you know, disbursed when you are done with your project and you submit your final report. So rest of the 15% being released, you know, after the completion of the project. Go on, please. Next slide. Uh, normally, we have uh, set grants for the year. So as I said, that it's a 
quite a popular program. We and we have, uh, as per the MOU with the Government of India, we are bound to present, I think, five to seven grants every year. This slide says seven grants. So usually it is five, and we extend to more uh, uh, by stretching our budget towards that. Uh, so in total, seven grants. And uh, in case we have some more fund savings in our accounts, and we because this is a very popular program, uh, amongst the academics and research fraternity of Shastri. So we try to add on number of grants if possible through savings that we have in, in our account. So uh, usually seven grants, but if uh, there is more funds available, we extend one or two more grants as well. And that's why we keep a good wait list with us. So once the education is over, we have uh, awarded seven grants, but we keep two or three in reserve as wait list it's waitlisted projects. So if we have savings, we go back to these people and we say we have some savings. So we are extending one more grant to you. So that's how it goes. Yeah, go on further, Prithiki. Yeah. Uh, not to discourage you, but to let you know that you must be upright and uh, very thorough in your proposal that you are submitting to Shastri Institute. This program is highly, highly competitive uh, and there's no personal interview for you to defend yourself. So everything that comes on paper is something that can be reviewed only. So you will have to be very, very thorough while you are uh, writing your proposal, devising your proposal. And for that, I think the next two speakers are going to talk about more in detail, how you can build it up, how you can strengthen your proposal that it can be a winning proposal for you. On an average institute receives 100 to, uh, I would say on an average 100 to 110 applications every year uh, under this program. And as I said that uh, we have only seven grants to make, so the, so the success is like around six to 7%, <clears throat> which, is, uh, which is quite competitive. But uh, there have been many cases wherein scholars who were not successful in first attempt or even in second attempt they came back to us for the feedback and uh, we have provided them the feedback that was received from peer or subject reviewers and also from education committee. And based on that, they have incorporated uh, or uh, you know, improvised their proposal and resubmitted in the next competition and they properly, you know, uh, finally, they uh, received the grant from our side. So, uh, success rate is, uh, I would say, uh, very low, uh, if if that is the correct expression. Uh, but uh, not to discourage you, but to let you know that it is competitive. So you have to be very very careful while you are writing and submitting your proposal. Uh, second slide, next slide, please. This is all automated. So the applications, applications that we receive is based on grant management system. So the portal is there on which you have to submit your application. I would say submit your application on time, uh, not keep it towards the last uh, minute because uh, usually we see that uh, there's a lot of traffic uh, on the last day and then there are technical difficulties that is that are being that are experienced by the submit by while the, you are submitting your application so i suggest that you be on time and submit your application timely manner so that there's no last minute glitch for you to uh, to while making the submission a full project proposal including title abstract schedule of uh, recent and projective activities name of participants publication details related to the proposed topic these are the applicant requirements. So while you are submitting, there's an online form that while you are sum submitting your form, please ensure that you have answered and you have narrated all these details that are stated on this slide. Uh, CV of the project director and Canadian partner. Uh, what I would like to mention here that uh, it is important. This is a very important document, but uh, what you should be focusing on that is related to your, the, related to the project that you are submitting. It should not be uh, 20 or 30 pages that you should be submitting as CV. Uh, any publication that you want to bring to the knowledge of the peers or the educator, educators, it should be in relation to the research that you are submitting to us. So uh, try to concise your CV uh, directly relating to the project that you are submitting. And uh, I, this, is the, this is the observation that we have received from the 
adjudicators as well that uh, reading such long series is very, very difficult. So uh, I, uh, we must tell the prospective applicants that they should be very concise, very brief, and very direct to what, and should be highlighting the areas wherein their achievements can be relatable can be related to the project they are submitting to Shastri Institute. The budget, budget is very, very important uh, for any grant that you are writing. So be very specific on what you want from us. Keep in mind that it is uh, a defined grant, it is not unlimited grant that we are giving you. So devise your budget accordingly. We would encourage you to get more funding from your institution or from any other source of funding that you can bring in. Uh, if you have already established funding from some other source and you want some addition from Shastri's side, you must reflect accordingly. Uh, what we encourage here that there should be some participation in terms of grant uh, in your budget from your parent institution and partner institution side as well. Uh, even if not in, uh, in, to in, in, in terms of monetary uh, benefits that you can reflect, but in uh, in kind, you can always, uh, in kind of infrastructure, you can always present that in your budget that what are the infrastructure that will be made available by your institute because it reflects on partnership between the institution. Uh, effectively, it should be tripartite arrangement where Shastri is a body supporting this project, this grant, but uh, partnering institutions like in this case, Professor Shah's uh, University, University of Laval, and uh, Professor Ashraf's University are also contributing in some manner. We believe that once there is a sharing of budget, sharing of funds, then the accountability uh, goes high in terms of productivity towards the project that you are submitting. Uh, last point, certificate of ethical approval, if applicable, if your research needs that, if it requires that, please secure this uh, ethics approval on time and submit it along. That will uh, ease a lot of issues uh, and uh, your project, if, if found really good, will not stuck just because you have not submitted the ethical approval on your project that you are proposing to Shastri. This is also very, very important. And uh, we suggest that you do include this, uh, this approval with your, uh, while you are submitting your proposal to Shastri Institute. Go further, please. And this slide presents you more details on budget. So detailed description and justification of uh, uh, anticipated expenses, as well as the disclosures of other funding sources and including funding requests from SIKI, uh, support in terms of in-kind contribution in the budgetary outlay, as I already spoken about. Uh, this program does not support the overhead charges. So this was very important for us to mention here because uh, if you want to buy a laptop or a camera or a gadget to do your research, we are sorry that to say here that we will not be able to support that kind of expenditure under this budget. Uh, CKRG grant cannot be used to procure, uh, I have explained this because uh, we are not allowed to, the, the government of India norms does not uh, you know, permit us uh, doing that. Uh, employers endorsement is required from both the both the uh, partners like lead and co-applicants institutions. So uh, while submitting your application, I think this is an, uh, another document that is required for you to submit along. Go to next uh, slide, please. Uh, very important information for all of you if you're planning to submit your application, uh, academic merit. Uh, and I'm sure the next speakers are going to be talking in detail about these, which includes, you know, research abilities, clarity of objectives, scope and methodology, also innovativeness of proposal. Uh, there have been exper uh, experiences where I've seen the proposal is good, but it is very, very theoretical and it has no applied side. So please focus on applied side of your project as well, whether it is uh, relating to social sciences, humanities, or STEM. Uh, every proposal must reflect on applied side of it so that uh, it can contribute in some way to the society at large. The coherence and importance of the proposed activities to achieve anticipated outcome in the given timeline. So timeline is very important for 
for the researchers as well and for us to understand or the evaluators to understand if you are being uh, you know you are presenting it uh, a viable timeline or not and while you are doing it please consult with your uh, uh, with your collaborator uh, at the great level because uh, sometimes it is uh, felt that only one one i mean uh, only one researcher uh, deals with all the aspects and uh, he or she submits all the details or the whole project is devised by one person and uh, it doesn't reflect on the other collaborators side so i would say greater uh, greater collaboration is required at this point to understand but what is the reasonable timeline that you can present to us it has to be completed in two years but then what is the timeline is an important component for the evaluators to understand and grant you uh, the, the award uh, the other important feature is evidence of binational character or dimension in your project so how why india and canada why not india and japan why not india or spain so why india and canada should be answered well on your uh, research proposal that you are submitting uh, similarly scholarship of the researchers and involvement of young scholars is very very integral uh, shastri institute really recommends that uh, the team of uh, young scholars be involved in the project that is granted to any professor and uh, if that is reflected well in your proposal that you have submitted it it, it is it is caught by the you know this uh, by the evaluators and you are uh, you are evaluated very well on these points so ensure that you have a good team of research scholars with working for you on this project uh, another component is clarity of expected outcome and relevance of the project as uh, uh, the likelihood that the project findings will be of use to students or researchers or policy makers i mean or what level the the recommendations are going to be shared also important is how you are going to disseminate the findings of the research who's going to be the user you know end user who's going to be so that is also important point here that also gets 10 points uh, to itself uh, another point is, of course, justified budget uh, is another important criteria for this. Go on further. Uh, some, you know, uh, you can, uh, this, this information is also available on the website, but you can see the variety of uh, research that we have supported over the period of time from 16, 17, 17, 18. Vicky, you can go through these slides quickly. Uh, we don't want to stay here on this on these slides. So you can see by uh, by seeing the project titles uh, that there is a variety of uh, discipline and knowledge domain that we support, and uh, you can see the areas as well, uh, wherein you will find from biomedical sciences, you will find from urban planning, library and museum studies, gender and sexuality. So all kind of researches, agriculture and food engineering, pharmaceutical sciences, social work, geography, civil. So you, you name a discipline, you are there. So I would say that uh, we are all open to receive your proposals in any areas that you want to present to us. We are not biased around any particular discipline or subject. So uh, I would say that these were a couple of areas wherein we wanted you to highlight the importance of these and for you to understand that uh, uh, if you are keeping aligned, if you are keeping yourself aligned with these areas, I think uh, your proposal is going to be shaped up well, and uh, uh, you can be a winner as well. So I think this is of uh, some help to the audience who are here with us. Uh, I can see around hundred people joining us. Uh, thank you so much for being here, and uh, we see you as a prospect applicant for this program. And I am really hoping that this uh, webinar is going to help you out in uh, drafting and crafting a good proposal and uh, understanding the nuances that are now going to be shared by the two speakers who are with us tonight. So with this, thank you so much. Uh, uh, and now I would like to invite Dr. Shah and Dr. Ashraf to uh, share your ideas and thoughts and uh, reflect upon how was your experience on this program and how you have how, what are what what kind of tips you would like to you know there's no short ways or uh, i would say but then there are ways you can make things better present it better 
and uh, I hand it over to you now for your good opinion, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Prachi. Uh, on behalf of uh, Dr. Ashraf and me, we, we really appreciate the, this webinar that you arranged because there are so many questions. As you said, I was involved in uh, earlier administration of SICKI as well as an executive council member. I know that we have, uh, our applicants have a lot of questions. And so I have tried to cover with uh, Dr. Ashraf some of these subject matter. Uh, Piki, can I ask you to please take care of the slide because I tried doing it uh, from my Mac and it is, I'm not, I'm not good at it. Let's put it this way. I haven't learned how to do it. So if you can. So Mac, uh, Mac has issues. From uh, my side also, I keep on doing on Yeah, yeah, no worries. Yeah, yeah, no worries at all. Uh, please tell me which one to go first. I think Dr. Ashraf, you had suggested uh, uh, the one the before how to write the Siki one. Okay, here we go. Yeah, that will be better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, sir. Just allow me a few seconds. Yeah. No problem. Mm. Okay, so is that visible now? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes, that's great. That's great. Thank you very much. Uh, so first and foremost, uh, Prachi, thank you very much. And Reshma too for the introduction. Uh, Prachi, thanks for the uh, giving all the details of the program. So my second slide is almost redundant, but it is just that I wanted that these items are exposed to uh, people. Well, of course, we have been introduced, so I will not go into it, but I think the title is very telling, facts and facets about this grant program. This grant program is uh, quite different from many other programs that Shastri Institute runs, and therefore, you need to wear the right, uh, it is a different way of looking at this project. I would say closest it is, is to scientific grant that you would apply to funding agency either in India or in Canada. And it is really in that category, except that ponderation or the weightage that you give to each criteria of evaluation is very different. And therefore, I want to highlight those aspects of it in my talk and how to get best out of it. Uh, I also want to thank Shastri Institute for giving me the feedback on what the reviewers have been telling them on the grant application. So. I can tell you the do's and the don'ts that will come out with this okay. and that how to prepare for yourself for that. And uh, Dr. Ashraf, I would let you know that anytime you feel uh, you want to in, uh, interrupt me, please feel free, put your mic on. No, I, can, I, I would just add on whenever we feel. Please, yes. The same way it will be a collective presentation. Thank you again, Dr. Prachi, uh, Reshma ma'am, and then uh, PK ma'am for arranging such a nice webinar. And then since Dr. Shah has already Thank both of you. Wonderful introduction from for both of us. And it was, a, I would say that it will reflect from Professor Shah's presentation that we have turned into not only this beginning grant into a good, uh, better understanding of science. And then for better, we are turning this into a futuristic, better collaborative research proposal, which could be taken to a much sensible conclusions or some fruitful outcome for both India and for both the societies, I would say both of us are working in our forte. He is a big name. Professor Shah is a big name in cancer, as you can see from his CV. And we have done a little bit of a small work on the blood clotting disorder. So, but once we combine both the things, you will see the beauty of outcome in coming days. Professor Shah, please carry on. Yes. Okay. So uh, we would also like to tell you that Dr. Ashraf has prepared a very nice PowerPoint on uh, much more and detailed theme of how to prepare a good grant application. And I would strongly recommend you that you should do it because here we are just going to talk in bullet points while he's actually giving you the details in that. Uh, I am assuming that Shastri Institute will provide you as a supplementary material to all of you. It will be accessible and it's very good. I would like you to, I would strongly recommend that uh, you look at that as well. It will be useful not only for SICRG grant application, but even for any other application that you make. And among the things that, uh, let me, could I have the second slide please? All right, there, there you are. So uh, Dr. Call has really very nicely covered objectives of the program and uh, so these are really the admin side of it. But actually, I wanted to highlight some of the things that are very important for you to understand. 6.6% success rate. And Prachi, yes, it, we should call it a success rate because it's really the way grant competitions are judged by the, by the applicants. And they want to know, where do I stand? So yes, it is low. But the, the fact is that you get a chance to improve and come back, as she said. 
And in our case also, it was the same thing that we came back yeah. again and uh, we were more successful because we could address some of the questions that people had asked. So I think that is one thing that you have to keep in mind. And yes, if it is the low success rate, it simply means that if you want this grant badly, you need to prepare very well. And that is what is very yeah. important. It's not just for this, for every grant application you do, you need to prepare very well. So this is not something strange to, or we are not stranger as a, as a grantee, as grantees, we are not stranger to this idea that in a way there is a prestige attached to it. So if I get this grant, of course, it will be considered by my university or my hospital, or I'm sure in India is the same situation that it is a good grant. In fact, the uh, overhead charge that Dr. Call uh, talked about in Canada, generally all grants carry 15% overhead by the admin. But in this particular case for Shastri, they give us an exemption because it's a charitable organization and funded by, but otherwise there is no exemption. Even a government of Canada grant that I get, 15% goes to admin, but it goes separately. So uh, what I'm saying is that it is considered as a good grant to have, whether you live in Canada or in, in India. And therefore, it's worth a try. What it allows you is what none of the granting agencies in Canada allow me to do, which is to start something and as an exploration. If I apply to CIHR or for insert grant in Canada, I will need so much more background information. While this is one of those which allows you to take the very first step. And therefore, I strongly encourage you to think about it. In, in a way that make a solid application and how to make that, we'll get into that in a, in a few minutes. Uh, average value of the grant, uh, uh, I would admit that it is low by, by standard that we have here, but still it is sufficient for travel, it is sufficient for, to send a graduate student, and which is what most of us do. And uh, therefore I think uh, implication of the younger students, apart, apart from professors, is extremely important element in this grant evaluation. As you saw, 10 out of 60 points are meant for that. So you do not want to neglect it. It's just not that the senior professors are running up and down the two countries. That's going to be viewed as good, but not sufficiently good. So please keep that in mind as well. So now let's go for the next slide, please. Uh, since you have all these details, I will not go into it. Again, it is 10 points, but look at the way in which it has been divided, as you can see, this is the level of effort you need to put in every one of the six points that are given here. If you think that you wrote wonderful scientific grant or wonderful grant of, of uh, application, this is just going to get you maximum 10 points. If you do not provide by national nature, if you do not provide the scholarship of younger researchers, if you do not provide an outline or how is your project meshed with the two countries or two expertise very well, you're not going to go far. So you really have to pay attention to every aspect of it, including budget clarification that she made. I think it's very important that you provide, if you have institutional support in kind, or if you have an alternative support. This grant is generally considered as an add-on to many large projects. So if you have a project of 100K, you can say this 20K or $20,000 is gonna be useful for X, Y, and Z aspect of my grant. The advantage is to everybody that the granting agency such as Shastri will feel happy that they are participating in a much larger project than their funds can support. And others will be happy that part of their project is funded by uh, Shastri Institute. And of course, in acknowledgement of the publications or books that you write or, uh, or articles that you publish or presentations that you make at meeting, you can always highlight this. So keep this in mind when you are preparing this, uh, this packet. I know that I'm, I'm more or less certain that out of these hundreds so 100 people who are in the webinar, you have different fields of expertise. I am particularly from biomedical field. That's how I got uh, in collaboration with Dr. Ashraf on, uh, on a subject. But what we are talking, and therefore we are not going to stick to the biomedical side of it, I can assure you on that. Though I would, I would love to talk about how to treat a, a mouse with a cancer, but that is not what we will talk about today. What we will talk about is how to go about explaining to the reviewers that your grant is collaborative indeed, and it is a binational project, which is feasible, which is doable. May I have the next slide, please? Yes, so uh, instead of going into the actual how to prepare, let us see what the reviewers have said. And I think these are very telling. These points are the ones that I want you to really pay attention to and see what does the review panel like? We all, I'm sure many of you who are senior enough will be sitting in grant panel reviews. 
and you would want to know what are the criteria by which people are examining these things and what are the comments that they make. And so I will give you both the comments that you hope to see from the reviewers and comments that you do not or you want to avoid seeing from the reviewers. So first one, let's put it on the positive note. That if I, so you can understand that if I'm a reviewer in this panel and if I have to choose only six out of 100 people, I simply know that I do not have time to waste reading and analyzing a grant application, that stands no chance. So what is gonna happen is most of us will be getting a load of maybe 10, 20 applications. So what I will do is I'll quickly scan it. And then I say, oh yeah, these are my stars, correct? I know that 6% chance. So I'm going to be very careful in what I want to put my time. All reviewers are voluntary. You are imposing, Shastri Institute is nice enough that everybody volunteers to do this task. So please do not make their task more difficult. And one of the ways to do it is write well. If you write very well, your element or the, or the subject that you want to study comes out very well. Please avoid typos in English. Or please avoid the silly error. Do not forget that you have done a lot of cut and paste in your grant application package. And therefore make sure that it's not repeating elsewhere the same sentence. There are many things, but what it comes to is prepare well write well and that takes time so it is to be well written and it should be well planned study if this is what the reviewer says you have made it this reviewer is going to very forcefully argue in your favor when it is coming project area is good and interesting means is it innovative is it something that has not been done are you just hashing the same old stuff or have you come up with something completely new does it in uh, does is the project feasible you can write a dream project, but is it even feasible? I mean, that's what you need to figure out. Is it relevant to the goal of your study? This is something that I find sometimes is there is two team writing and then part of the text doesn't mesh with what the other side is saying. So remember, this is not a tourism plan. This is a plan which well executed project in which you have thought through what you want to achieve. And therefore, this has to be very clearly laid out and in a running thread. There should be no appearance that this is like a two sections of grants. They were not talking to each other, as Dr. Paul said. That sometimes one person writes everything, but when it comes to execution, the other person says, but this can't be done. So this should all be worked out. So when it is seen by the reviewer as very feasible and relevant, this is what you look for. By national nature, you cannot emphasize any less. This is, a funded, this is funded by government of India, and this program really requires that you do by national uh, approach. By that doesn't mean that you just go and approach somebody in Canada or in India and say, hey, just put your signature on it. That's not gonna work. It will really have to explain, it will have to be explained in terms of the CV of each of you. Why do you think that you are the good person to do it? Why not somebody else? And it is really required that this project completion requires a complementary expertise. So this is what you will highlight in the grant package. And this is what the reviewer will see. And then you get 10 out of 10 and you are made it, you see, in that subject. Complementarity of expertise, I just mentioned that that is extremely important. Why only two of you? Why Dr. Ashraf and me? Why not somebody else in Canada? Why he came to, we came to think that I'm the right person to talk to him, to discuss, provide the expertise and conduct the experiments? We do actually animal experiments. So you can imagine resources are required. So all these things go into convincing the reviewers that this is a well-written grant. This is what you have to aim for. Implication of other members of the team and specifically students and postdoctoral fellows. This is a mandate of Shastri. So you really have to figure out, you're not going to say that Professor Shah will go to Delhi and have fun, no. Yes, I did go to Shras, uh, Jamia Milia to give a Gyan uh, series of lecture. That's where I met uh, Dr. Ashraf and that is where we decided to have this collaboration. So the idea is that it's not me, but he's going to send his students to Quebec and that my students might go over there or he will come over to Canada. So there are many ways in which you have to clearly explain that it is the younger members of the team who will also be implicated in this event. Proposed budget should be realistic amount of money that you have 18,000 or 10 lakh rupees is not very high even by Indian standard I understand that your grants by DBT and all are running into crores of rupees so this is not a uh, big budget but what you are providing and we are not ex expecting that you will do a work only worth that kind of money 
what we are expecting is that you have a much larger game going on in terms of project that you have in mind and that this contributes to exactly x y and z component of the project that you are doing this is a very good way to do it it doesn't mean that if you have only the project that is using the proposed budget is acceptable or not perhaps dr paul and others in trust institute will be able to support but it is well received by the reviewer and it is a general tendency of the review panel to see that if somebody else has funded this project, it means that there is a whole independent set of reviewers who like this program and therefore they have given the fund. So the reviewer of Shastri panel will also feel more confident that why not? I mean, we are giving just 20% of the budget and therefore it will be great. So it adds a little bit extra to your application and it, it crosses the finished line uh, in a better way. Let's put it this way. Uh, I know that some subjects and some fields are not very well financed from in terms of granting uh, other granting agents. Even in India, social sciences get uh, generally less money. But this is not the point. The point is that whether institution provides a good support, this can be in-kind support. It's not money. And it still counts. It still counts and you have to document it. It's not just a given. When you have a head of the department or vice chancellor or vice dean of your research signing the paper, they should be aware and you can then in indicate the components by which they are supporting you. For us, animal house is subsidized by 50% and therefore my budget for animal study is well less than where I, if I were to go in another institution. So things like that, there are many ways in which you can do it. So it's not just the money, but it's just the element that there are others who are equally enthusiastic about supporting this project. Feasibility of the project is extremely important, especially for some of our fields where if you say that I will do work with two mice, I'm sorry, you cannot get statistical data out of two mice. You will have to say, or you have to plan that I will be using at least seven to 10 mice per uh, time point or per sample analysis. Or if you're saying I'm doing with cancer patients, then I should be saying that I have to have, is do I have a capacity to recruit so many patients? I'm sure similar constraints exist in feasibility of every subject. Can you really do it? Do you have resources of uh, computer? If you are working in social sciences, really do have people in place to go and do the survey that you're talking about or provide the services that you're talking about. So I'm sure that each of you will recognize this in your own field. And other collaborations for additional expertise are in place is also a great idea. Not just two of us, but if I need expertise of somebody else in some other aspect, they are not highly involved in the project, but if they say that I give a collaboration letter, it's always going to be useful. So these are the comments that you hope to see from reviewers. Let's go to the next slide, please. Now, this is what you do not want to see from the grant application. And that is, I think these two elements of the comments will tell you where you can really, really make your application foolproof. So the basic premise of the project is not developed. I think that many times, and I, I do blame, and I blame, I, I, have, I have been in Shastri's administration, but it is one of the organizations that use the shortest time frame from the application announcement to the application time. And to add to this, your summer time and our summer time are very different. So when you say that you are now into rainy season, we are really into the peak summer time when everybody's on holiday. So sometimes the timing is too short and therefore people just hash something together do a two three phone call with the collaborator and put it so many times and trust me the reviewers are so attuned to seeing this that it is a poorly prepared grant that it, you will fall into 94 out of 100 very quickly if it is not done properly project premise has to be developed very well and one of the tricks that i would explain to you is please do not wait for the announcement from Shastri Institute that this grant is announced. They regularly do this grant every once in six months, if I remember right, or it could be once a year. But what you have to do is prepare well in advance. You have to talk to your collaborator and say, hey, next time Shastri gives SICRG grant announcement, we should be ready what we are writing. And so that premise of the project is not going to be, you're not going to be able to write it in, in one week or two, two weeks you will be having so much of information to collect together. And I'm not discouraging those who are trying it for the first time. I think currently you still have at least four weeks to do it. But just to give an idea that premise of the project, why I do you want to do so? So there are two, three things that are important. Why this project? Then why you should be doing the project? What is your expertise? Is it something that wishful thinking, somebody else has done and you want to do it? No, 
you need to explain why you should do it and why it needs to be done. So these are very important elements that you bring it out. And then the way you will do it is going to be extremely important. So these three aspects of it will clearly come out to a reviewer when they are reading. So you want to be sure that you need to explain this very well. And some of the comments that I have written in, uh, in black color is really actually almost uh, verbatim citations of the reviewer. So in this particular case, the differences in economic conditions as the sole determinant of a given decision process in each country is not based on sound premise. Because you are just saying one aspect that takes care of it, but no, there is ambience and there is input. And this is particularly social sciences field, but you can see that the reviewer strongly disagrees that what you are saying is the only reason. So you want to tell them that, yes, I know there are four other reasons, but we are focusing on one. At least it will give the reviewer an idea that you know what you're talking and why you're talking. So I think this is something, yeah. And then uh, proposal lacks academic clarity, precision, and coherency of approach. So this is something that you really need to be very clear about, that it is clearly laid out. And technical deficiency is something that, uh, please read this, all these PowerPoints will be available, so read all the details. But technical deficiency or grantsmanship problems are also very important because they distract from the main message of your grant application. So please make sure that you are taking care of all these aspects very well. Animal numbers are justified, dose of administration, batch to batch, batch consistency. These are all technical aspects in our subject. I'm sure for you it is the same thing. And the budget and contingency is not adequate. So you see, reviewers tend to point out so many little things that you need to worry about. May I have the next slide, please? <clears throat> yes, the dues for a successful grant application. This uh, Dr. Ashraf's document is going to be very useful, but here I'm just putting a few of them. Read the rules of the I application. think you can explain and we can just share my PPTs because it will be by and large repetition, but they can keep that yes. as a document, right? Yeah, that will be great. Yes. So, so the rules of the applications you need to read, do your homework in advance to find the partners in your field of work. This is extremely important. You will not be, you will be surprised how many people find, look for the partner when the announcement is made. That is hardly the time. You should be working on it way before, knowing fully well that Shastri Institute consistently supports this program. You should work all the time when you are looking at partners and then be ready when the application comes. So communicate with partners, brainstorm and design the project with your partner, identify the need of binational nature, prepare a draft in advance so that you can refine it over two, three week period and get a friendly outside reviewer from your milieu to read and give you feedback. Is it readable? Because remember, Reviewers are not exactly working in your field. They are coming generally around the same domain of research, but they may not know. So it should be readable by anybody in your field, not just 100 people who work in your subject, but maybe 10,000 people who work in your domain. I think that is what you need to keep in mind. Please go to the next one. The don'ts for the SICRG application. This I cannot emphasize more. Please, please do <laughs> not just... Do not write to any and everybody in Canada or India. Hey, this is a grant application. Can I come to you? I have had people from library services who come and say, I want to come on this grant. I'm sorry. I, I don't work. Please do not ask me just because I am working in Canada. Can you please find a partner? All of us, all of you who are potential applicants are working in your subject. You read your literature. Read your literature. Find out who in Canada will collaborate with you, who in India will collaborate. And you contact them. This Shastri Institute cannot do it, nor can your representative of Shastri Institute do it. Remember that each of us are busy people and therefore we don't have time to find partner for you. We don't know what you're doing. You should be finding out. So please try not to bombard everybody with a blanket letter. Can I please, can you please sponsor my application? It, it doesn't work that way. Really, frankly speaking, do not rush and submit half-baked ideas for the best outcome. Because as you notice, it's 6.6%. So it is not going to be funded. And not only that, the review panel, if review panel members are repeating next year, they will remember that, oh, last time you wrote a bad one. And so, you know, you already put yourself on a wrong, wrong footing. Take your time. Write a good grant application. And when you are ready, apply so that you stand among the top. Do not wait until last minute for approval from suitable authorities. And this is something that I have often uh, noticed that we as researchers tend to do. You suddenly remember, oh my God, I need a vice dean's researcher. You are head of the department signature and they are, they are away from work. And then you try to call them up and get, please don't do that. It is, uh, you have enough headache of preparing your grant. Do not involve some more headache uh, that you can avoid. 
get it done in advance. It is easy to do. Do not forget to justify the need and strength of binational nature. Do not forget to demonstrate feasibility of the project and do not give unrealistically high or low budget for the work proposed. So I think those are some of the things that you keep in mind. May I have the next slide, please? And that is it. So this is really in generality that I have uh, talked about. I'm sure I'll be more than happy to take the question. I will let Dr. Ashraf uh, give whatever he wants to say. Uh, Zahid, you have something more to add? Please go ahead. Yes. So from Indian perspective, I would like to, since the, the, we will have almost like overlapping presentations, so I'm just trying to avoid, repeat two, three points. If you are looking to establish a lab with this grant, this is not a good idea to be very upfront and honest because this may, does not cover non-recurring expenses and it, as uh, Dr. Paul has already mentioned that it does not give you any instrument or any you know, infrastructure kind of building up computer, AC, all those kind of even social sciences, you know, if you want to buy some scanner or something. So that's so what is expected out of these tricky these efforts is that we assume that you already have a good infrastructure, good setup, already ongoing research going on. And you try to either, you know, always try to add par or the superior collaborator where which can add a total value for the both the nations. That would be, and then if you're looking from uh, science, the objectives are much more clear that yes, two expertise will finally converge and then, then uh, they will deliver in a much uh, larger scale or in a better outcome would come. I would say this applies both for even literature, humanities, languages, everywhere I have seen. And then Siki's model has been, I should appreciate that I am national coordinator for a SPARC grant also, another mobility-based international collaborative grant. I'm uh, from being Jamia, I'm a national coordinator for Portugal. But what I'm saying, they all, even their annual meeting, I present, I went there and they said, okay, this would be the first thing that we are trying to, you know, support the mobility of both the PIs. But I told them, no, CK is doing in a much uh, larger scale, like your STA is covered. Your... So this is a, one of the very few funding agencies or one of the very few avenues there, not only you. Uh, Indian PIE or the international um, Canadian PIE can reciprocate their visits to either you know India or to Canada, but it allows your students also to travel. And what it gives you if you train your students in the beginning or of his or her research work, he or she is available for you for another four years, for three and a half years. So you see. You are not only looking into this, what a small money you have generated, the ideas, the expertise. So money is indirect. I would say that try to maximize the benefit in a more indirect way. The other way, the same. Few of the things which the facilities are not available. And because of that, you are stuck. Your quality of research will be exponentially enhanced by that particular experiment, which could otherwise not been done, you know, sitting in Delhi or Calcutta or some other places in relatively a smaller lab or even bigger lab because you know sometimes let's see in the physics example we hardly have any simulation labs you know this country very few people work on let's see in the theoretical physics data they want to further sim do some simulation work some fusion work canada has in so many aspects very good infrastructure for this so you can go or you can send your visit so although on face value it's like 10 lakhs opportunities as Professor Shah has already mentioned, it does not attract you in a face value in a big way, but it gives an amazing opportunity that that half, at least half of the amount can be used for mobility, for travel, for your students' stay, or for which other funding agency does not do that easily. You know, they travel 50,000, 1 lakh for one trip or something, which you have to pull other resources and all for that. The second thing is that, as all of them have mentioned, 6.6% success rate. I would say in a month simpler way, one out of 15 projects are only successful. So you are competing with a really talented and really competitive audience or competitive serious scholars. So I would hate to see that your good idea has been failed or had been turned on because of last moment hasty rush. You know, so please, if you don't feel comfortable, it's not going to since they come twice a year, if I'm not wrong. So you wait Let's for see. the second, yeah. So you wait, please wait for the second term and make it, try to make it to a 
successful level that would be a much more you know helpful and encouraging i would say rather that you know good ideas because of uh, as uh, dr shah also mentioned is that announcements are very well three weeks two weeks time and then you tend to plan one week okay i'll write and at the end typical indian mindset we at the end want to pull up things at the 11th hour so if you are not comfortable in this uh, cycle please wait for the second cycle to be done the third thing i want to emphasize is for the beginners is that what we lack is that what it has to be is that introductory letter you know the moment you are putting forward the grant the introduction or the abstract has to be in a such a way that people get excited to read you know if you are cutting pasting from your own thing from the and then this looks lousy you know incoherent that but since you have not given emphasis to the abstract because you feel this is a summary of what i have written this actually kills the project because in any in any form because the reviewers won't be that excited so we do it uh, i would what i would suggest for the at least for the beginners or I mean, there may be lot of seniors to me but for the youngsters is that you write everything at the end you write a summary and the summary has to be the best or the most critical component because that invites or that attracts the reviewer to look into further you know what it would be and then try to the the, the second point are already very good ideas and very good but that sometimes we tend to be over ambitious you know and then you since this is so much competition one out of the 15 will be successful so you can't fool on all reviewers you know they will say yeah these guys are just seen and then this can't be done with this amount this time so try to be more on a realistic note try to be and then you say that or you try to emphasize that interaction although or the scientific question although will not covered in this project but this will give us an opportunity to interact this will give us an opportunity to you know the platform to know each other's work or learn from each other and there are multiple forums you know this use this as a launching forum i would say launching pad and try to like i am trying to discuss with dr shah to how to continuously come up with the next level let's see you want to apply our findings for the covid or let's see he wants to apply my uh, blood clotting research for cancer treatment so this gives you a huge opportunity in a both the way to make it as a launching project i can go on and on but i would say that uh, the point remains is that we will be open to i think you know, to take people's participants question and then as and when question comes either me and dr shah will try to you know clear dots or add value to it i think over to you uh, dr call i who will be conducting the questions i, I think it's uh, thank you from my side and then we both of us are open me and dr shah are open to answer any for the clarification thank you, so much. thank you thank you so much both of you it was wonderful to hear both of you on uh, practicalities on how to build up a good proposal how to build up a winning proposal or what to avoid what to be mentioned in the proposal as well uh, two three points that i would like to highlight as uh, stated by our two speakers the first is peer review so peer review uh, when i say peer review or subject review it is the you it is only your fraternity who's working in your area who are going to evaluate your proposal so they know the subject so uh, for them you need to be not to be very specific in terms of explaining probably the subject area or the subject or core details of the project but always keep in mind that it is also going to be read by couple of people who would be sitting on the adjudication committee who are not from your subject so the subject review is the first review that we convene uh, on your application that you submit to us there are three subject experts that those who are going to read your proposal maybe two from india and one from canada or can be other way as well like two from canada side and one from india side it is always important that you share your research project with your colleagues before you make a submission to us so that you can get the nuances cleared and they can raise it because sometimes when you are writing it you are you tend to miss important points in your subject what you are writing but your peers can always identify so you in your department your colleagues your friends your even uh, post doctoral students can be a good reviewer for that project i would say so make them read your proposal 
and after getting a review internally done, only then submit your proposal to Shastri Institute. Uh, also, while you are summarizing, try to be a little generic. As I said, adjudication committee is the committee wherein you will have uh, uh, four people sitting, four faculty sitting from India and Canada. It's a binational committee. But uh, there is no guarantee there is going to be a physicist or a microbiologist sitting on the committee. So you have to be, in your summary, eloquent, eloquent enough to present what you need to co conduct in terms of your research. So be very general in your uh, explaining, in your communication, that what you want to do in your research. Second is uh, about the feasibility. So even if you have set 10 objectives for your research project to achieve, I would say even if at the end of it you are able to achieve seven, it's a good outcome for me because uh, at times we go very, very ambitious and we think that things will go all right, but we can't predict things. It's not, things are not in our hands and not your hands as well. So sometimes things go uh, really differently as we have planned over what we have planned. So I would say that even if you have set 10 examples and at the end of it, you are able to achieve seven, it's a success for me and success for you. Another point that I would like to highlight as Dr. Ashraf of mentioning that uh, don't rush. So usually we have two rounds of applications uh, every year. And uh, this is an exceptional year where we are going to have only one round because we are approaching the end of MOU with Government of India. So once that is renewed, we will go back to our normal cycle of bi biannual programming. But for this year, it's only one grant, uh, one grant program that we are offering. So these were the three points that I wanted to highlight uh, to our audience as well. Uh, I, we have tried to answer and respond back questions. There were many. Uh, so we were simultaneously answering the questions as well. But still, there are a couple of quite relevant questions that can be answered by the speakers. So I would uh, request uh, uh, Shastri officials to read out them to the speakers so that they can respond back. Thank you. Uh, before that, is there any reflection that you want to conclude with Dr. Shah or Dr. Ashraf? Actually, we could do it at the end. Let's have question answer. At least I don't mind waiting for that. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's perfectly clear. So please read out the questions. Uh, Minakshi, Reshma, Piki, whosoever is going to do that. Uh, Minakshi, you can go ahead, please. Uh, hi, Prachi. So there are many questions uh, and I tried to answer as many as I could, but still there are expert uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah. Is it possible to have one round of review between the PI and the viewer before taking the final decision? I'm sorry, can you read that again? Uh, can you say that again, Minakshi? Yeah, it says, is it possible to have one round of review between the PI and reviewer before taking the final decision? Uh, may I answer the question? Uh, are you saying that is there a possibility to interact with reviewers by the applicant? I think yes. zero. Between the investigator and the reviewer. No, this I know that in NIH they do it, but that is one of the rare example, and that too it works in a very different manner because these are really uh, uh, grants which are given at a different scale. Here, you will not have any chance. You, as Dr. Call said, your written document is the only evidence they have. So you better prepare it well. Yeah, and thank you, Dr. Shah. Uh, next is, what is the start date for funded projects? This, uh, yeah. Yeah. More administrative questions, I think. Dr. Call will be able to answer. Yeah, so it's a primarily the financial year wherein the grant is made. And uh, if I understand why, uh, if this was the end of the year, like October, if we have made a grant to you, we don't expect that to be counted as a full financial year or full year for you, uh, uh, for your research. So we extend for six months uh, towards the end of your project if you see that uh, you aren't being, uh, you know, able to finish that in the stipulated time. But usually it is counted as a financial year. Like if you are awarded this year, so 2021 and 21 and 22 are going to be two years where you need to complete your research. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Paul. 
Next is what is the ethical approval? So I can answer from Indian side. Ethical approval, you are asking, right? So yeah. for yeah. for the biological sciences or any literature or anywhere, you want to have a consent from the participant. I would say in a broader term. When we are using laboratory animals, we need we had a committee of institutional ethical committee, and in India we have CPCA, you know, committee committee for uh, against the um, uh, cruelty and um, rational use of animal with all ethical standards. So we have to commit both the way for either for animal or for the human studies. Every institution, university or organization, they have a specific ethical committees, especially for the animals from the CPCA base, and for the human from Indian side, we have ICMR constituted committee. So every institution. So this is mainly on the biological science, but for the social sciences also, uh, the same in human ethical committee, institutional ethical committee looks into all that whoever the subjects they have been. Properly, consently, they have informed and they have given the informed consent to participate. So these are the and they 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 will be not used or they will be their information not will be not disclosed and all possible. So this is the ethical uh, approval and most of the institutions have both animal as well as human ethical committee. Dr. Shah will add from the. Canada part, which is much more stringent, but I tell you, Indian part is also equally. They we have to fight for every number of them. So the, may I, I would just add that uh, Shastri Institute requires institutional signature exactly for this reason that the institution knows that not any kind of research is supposed to be okay. There are so many limitations. So it's all cultural issue also. What is allowed, what's not allowed. So almost every institute will have a series of committees. Which will evaluate whether your question is correct, whether your whether your animal treatment that you will do is correct. There are so many questions, but you don't have to worry. Nobody will sign your paper. Nobody will sign your application from university side, at least in Canada, unless you have tick mark that yes, it needs ethics approval or it needs animal approval. Or, yes, it needs questionnaire approval. So many of these things. So. You won't have to worry what's that. It will be automatic. But this will come into picture when you plan your studies. When you plan your studies, you're not going to be able to have anything goes. For example, over here, somebody had a patient uh, sample from United States who, who studied the, and did the analysis and tried to publish a paper. And this person not only lost the grant, but also lost a job. So it is considered extremely serious breach of ethics. And this is taught to the students when they're studying. So everybody knows, even a PhD student in my team or a master's student would know what is ethically approved or not. So I guess, uh, I hope that is enough. But there are a lot of, uh, how do you say, uh, hoops that you have to run through if ethics are involved. And therefore, Shastri doesn't want to get involved in this. They are not expert. They want university to oversee that part of it. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Ashraf. Thank you, Dr. Shah. Another is, is there a template available for what the employer needs to state in that letter required? Reshma, would you like to respond? Yes, the template is available on the website and you can download and get it uh, signed from your employer. Yeah. Next is from a neuroscientist and you want to know that uh, whether emphasis will be given to the neuroscience research or not. I think Dr. Call has very really amply stated that all domains are open and there is no, yes, there are some seven general items that they have given on what government of India likes to emphasize, but it is a very broad uh, subject matter. So I don't think anybody should feel that my subject is going to be funded. This is not how Shastri works. So. Yeah. And next is almost saying that, uh, that scholar don't have the prior big grant then how likely is my grant application would be considered? Yeah. So both the way I would say, uh, Professor Shah, you would like to start or? No, no, I didn't get the nuance, but uh, is right, if you got it, please go So ahead. he is trying, she is trying to ask, or whatever the, the participant is trying to ask, that is almost like a mandatory or almost like acceptable that he or she should have a prior big grant. 
I would say definitely no. Okay, because if your question is very relevant for binational importance, then it does not. You know, let's see if you're looking into from the literature's angle. You know, looked into the francophonic evolution of francophonic gender society, or if you look into uh, like you know, trying to look at the Canada specific situation of that, how the coexistence of English and French. Which you will never have uh, if you're looking your thirst area or looking at a question that how what kind of overlap is between the French uh, civilization and the British civilization. So although from the research from our science or uh, engineering perspective, we feel that we can we can push that much further that I have five different grants. The money will be the resource will be pulled from there. But if our questions are unique. Or if the questions are of by or mutual interest or mutual uh, um, uh, expertise, then you don't need a prior grant because there's no possibility of. Uh, uh, there could be possibility where you don't, you may not, you, you may never have the same kind of uh, grant. Like I've given you the example of looking into cultural aspect of uh, uh, evolution of, uh, let's see, you know. Uh, medieval Indian time versus what was happening in the Canadian side. So these all were not. So if the the questions are for the mutual interest, then I think that the, it does not apply. Although it makes your CV more impressive and all, but I don't think uh, Dr. Shah will back me up that reviewer does not discriminate on the basis of what they have. As far as I understand, but Dr. Call yeah. can add that uh, from reviewer side. No, absolutely, you are right, Dr. Shah. That. Uh, we do not discriminate in, in terms of, you know, who are the established scholars or who are the new scholars proposing a new research. So we actually want more uh, grants to be made to new scholars, young scholars who are developing research areas and building up research corridor between India and Canada. So please feel free and please feel encouraged that uh, Shastri is actually motivating younger lot a lot. Thank you. If I, if I just may add from the Canadian perspective, many of the younger professors would have got a starting grant and they could always add that element. They can also mention what the university is providing you already. So I think it doesn't have to be a, you should not have to have a million dollar grant to say, give me $20,000. That doesn't, it is not an obligation at all. What I meant to say is that you want to say, what is the support structure available to you from all around? It can be an actual grant or it can be a kind support as Dr. Paul said. So, don't feel shy about that. And like what Dr. Call said, in Canada, definitely we give a lot more emphasis on young and young investigator. In fact, there is a percentage of grant that is always allotted to young investigator. Their percentage is way higher than the general pool of applicants. And I assume that Shastri also has an encouragement value uh, uh, emphasis for the younger investigators. So feel free. I guess the same applies for Indian funding agencies also. They encourage this. Because this whole, what I said, the indirect benefit to the society, if you train younger researchers or younger social scientists that help them, that will help them to grow much uh, faster or that will cover much more uh, larger span of their professional tenure as opposed to already established people. Yeah. Any other question? Yeah, uh, Minakshi, we can uh, respond to, it's already 6.13, 6.14, so uh, only two more questions very briefly. Those who are closely uh, towards speakers and rest we can see on in uh, assess them internally uh, and then send it to our speakers and we can seek the responses and share with the audience then. Thank you. Yeah, Praji, more of the questions pertains to general uh, related to the Shastra Institute, then probably I think we can answer them uh, through email. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then in that case, we can give so, our, uh, our final statements or is that what you would like, Prachi? Absolutely, sir. Okay. Well, then I will let Zahid start then. Uh, no, Zahid, no, sir. So you go ahead. Start. I'll just say few words please you go ahead so the or, or i can just quickly wrap it up in a, yeah. one or two lines is that as from the name itself shastri indo canadian fellowship or indo canadian grant so what you're looking for you're not looking for a project you're looking for a partnership and what you can find from our chemistry you know in a, even the virtual conversation 
you can feel that these guys are over the one one and a half year they have developed certain kind of chemistry understanding towards each other so although this ck grant will be over in a year's time or so two years time what the idea behind i would say that paul will also uh, support me on this point is that to create or a build up a relationship or build up a bilateral you know collaborator who can go much higher or much further than this a specific grant so that would be the first point the second point is that this for the social scientist or the for languages and you know, this gives you huge potential of interacting where the whole uh, what you would say is that the research is individualized like you are meeting a big scholar you are meeting a big poet you are being meeting a good literature person so that adds on so much value or so much gives you so much opportunity to you to you know come up with so many new new ideas to come up to mod modulate your research modulate your academic interest modulate your uh, understanding towards society which for the science sake is more we are more i would say the more mechanized you know we have a certain protocol we are just trying to look into but if you look from the literature angle you may, you you have a collaboration in uh, with the one uh, faculty and then you are going to toronto literature festival so use this in a exponential way you know which which shastri gives a huge opportunity you can di discuss with your pi and a plan in a such way i am not trying to give all philosophical point because i am too young to talk on but in a practical realistic terms if you want to the same way this uh, you want you are a from fine art person you can chase into you know you can connect with a number of museums where you can look into the number of fine art collections which is visit certain museum talk with the people and look into how they have projected their society in art form so these are the huge opportunity for what i would say that hidden benefits or hidden uh, outcomes of which are not i think possibly documented nobody would say that i when there and visited and then my whole life was changed because i met certain poet and his revolutionary poem or francophonic poem was something which i never heard of which i whole life dreamed of or of the i saw the art collection which was in the beginning of 18th century and which has changed my total understanding towards art sir you can give more philosophical points i just i can I'm trying I to give a general I, I, yeah I can just so leave I'll limit myself to one or two subjects. One is I like your play of word that S I C R G. The I C is Indo Canada, but actually it's institutional collaborative grant. But what you say is right. Actually, is that collaboration between two institutes is Shastri's aim. The idea is simple that we have Canadian members and Indian members, and we want them to talk to each other. And uh, and that's the reason why Dr. Paul said that we are limiting it to be. And I think membership is a very broad. that they apply so for example a university can have many affiliated colleges but if they belong to university then i think as you might have noticed that you are eligible or my hospital is uh, is a research center which is affiliated to university laval then i will be eligible even if i wasn't a faculty member in university itself so i think there are many ways to interpret and so it's it's good it is india canada collaboration it's an institutional collaboration the idea is that people come and go students come and go professors come and go but laval university and jamia milia university is forever and therefore if a link is established by us then the dean and vice chancellor and chancellor of the university know about it and shastri's aim is that this becomes an institutional memory that we used to collaborate let's do it more so a next generation and the one after will always remember to do it i think that is one aspect and second thing that i would like to say is the concrete benefits are really a lot as uh, professor ashraf just mentioned some of them he put from indian perspective i could add some more that in a collaboration i had with uh, maharaja sayajira university in baroda three students came and i can tell you that two of them went came back for phd studies in my institute not to my lab but to somebody else because when they were there for three months four months in my lab they participated in conferences in seminars you know we have too many meetings going on and there they come across other researcher who asked them hey so what are you doing and so yes we were trying to do one particular work but in the process the students got exposed to more i had professors who came to on collaborative uh, visit 
And yes, we did the work together, but after that, of course, I have a professor, I'm going to arrange a lecture for them. So many other researchers came around and we started talking. And then they, because they are in Quebec, they went into Montreal, they went to Alberta, somewhere else. So you have plenty of opportunity and the same applies to the inverse side. I came to Jamia Millia, but I landed up going to at least six other universities based on the Gian program invitation. So you can understand, and I'm now working with those people to develop new project. I'm going to go to Kashmir University. I already applied for that. So I can imagine that your, your sphere of contact and sphere of number of people who would be interested in your work will increase greatly. Where is it useful? Of course, for students it's easy. They will find few future avenues of research or where they want to go. For seniors like us, it is good. We find the independent reviewer for our for project application, for our papers that we submit to the journal. So there is in numerous benefit. I would say that at any given time, when I used to be involved in numbers game in Shastri Institute as an administration part, I realized that a Shastri Institute's $1 stretches to almost ten dollar over your career it's it's something that you have to understand that sometimes you say it's peanuts yes you could say some of the money is peanuts but but still what it brings you in the end in your career is way more and therefore take it seriously it is a interesting opportunity that all of you have got and research grant gives actually i can tell you that if you pre create some sufficient data and maybe first paper you can then go to nih HR, you can go to DBT and get maybe a million dollar grant. This is your, you know, stepping stone to get much better output from this. This is the aim for which Shastri Institute has been funded by Government of Canada and Government of India. Government of India more consistently in recent times than Government of Canada, but nonetheless, eligibility stays for Canadians because even if Government of India gives grant, the Canadians are eligible for it. Vice versa is also true. Thanks. Thanks again to all the 80, yeah, 65 people who are still patient yeah, enough. To I, I would request if you can probably discuss about uh, budget, how it is uh, shared amongst both the partners, because there are lots of queries around that. And people want to understand how both the partners, they divide their budget amongst and how it is transferred to their universe. Yes. Uh, this is uh, totally more of a technical question, I think. No, it is totally I, I, up to the collaborator how they want yeah. to spend the money. Shastri has no role to play into it. So it's a project that is convened or conducted by the two people who have come together. So they are the best judge how the money should be spent, who should be taking the lead, and the who's, whosoever is the lead applicant gets the money in their account, in their institutional account. And then they have responsibility to you know share the money with the partner in Canada or India, what sort of places. So we do not come in picture. Uh, totally, we are out of it. It is between the PI and OPI how the funds are going to be dispersed amongst themselves. Before uh, we close the session, we can have the survey of uh, poll questions. Vicky, can we have the poll? Yeah, in, while you are uh, going for poll, I can just say that uh, to conclude the webinar that uh, we are here to strengthen the binational corridor on research. So the effort is by our programming that uh, we bring people together, we being people from India and Canada who have common interests to share and build it up so that future generation can build on uh, the capacity that you are providing now. The second is we are not uh, just asking you to do your research, but you uh, you know, but to go beyond understanding beyond your research is also very important. So that comprises of culture, literature, flora and fauna and whatnot. So if you are going to Canada or you are coming to India, it is your responsibility as a, as a, as, as a researcher to look into the various aspects that affects not just research, but human life as well. And as Dr. Shah rightly said that uh, Shastri money one dollar fetches, you know, ten dollars, uh, and I would say that it has a banyan tree effect. So uh, you get, you sow one seed, and you see the multiple branches coming out of it. So the scope is unlimited because we provide you free hand to conduct your research and for it for your good. And uh, I think uh, these are the couple of things on that we uh, that we you know the philosophy that on the programs of Shastri Institute are based. So 
I uh, once again thank you, uh, Dr. Shah and Dr. Ashraf, for being here with us tonight and sharing your wonderful opinion about how to craft a winning proposal and talking about factors of the program. Uh, I think Piki is ready with the poll, so can we have the poll and then we can uh, leave for the day. Hi, good evening everyone. Won't take much time. So I'm launching the poll. It'll take just 40 seconds for all of you to answer this for, you know, just four questions to know, you know, how we did in this webinar. So 40 seconds from now. And while you are attempting uh, the poll, uh, we request you to, uh, you know, share your feedback as well as uh, any questions that pertain to CIKI's grants and programs and of course anything in relation to what has been presented today by our uh, honorable speakers. So you can put all these queries uh, to CIKI applications at CIKI.org.in and also at CIKI events at CIKI.org.in. All uh, these email IDs are available on our website as well. So I still see people attempting the questions so I will not quit until we are all done. So I think, yeah, we are good. So this brings us to the uh, end of this webinar. And I thank you, all the speakers here. Thank you, uh, Dr. Shah, Dr. Ashraf, Dr. Kaul. Thank you, Reshma uh, Minakshi for being there and you know conducting this whole webinar in such an efficient manner. So uh, we look forward to seeing our attendees in the next upcoming uh, webinar series that uh, will bring in more and more new speakers for uh, all of us. And uh, good evening to everyone. Look forward. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Wonderful. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah.